Hi, I'm Ken German, Senior Managing Editor at CNET.com. I'm here to today to take a first look at the Samsung Array. This is a new phone for Sprint. It's also out for Boost. Of course, Sprint, that, uh, that price is, will require a two-year contract, while Boost is contract-free. Now, you're probably looking at this phone and you're saying, gosh, this thing looks really old. It looks like I just dug it out of a drawer from maybe 2005. And yeah, it does look a little old. It's a very tried and true design. It's very familiar, but it's a slider phone. It's a feature device made for texting. So really, there's not much you can do to really mix that up, that design up. So I think it's perfectly straightforward, easy to use, uh, maybe a little boring, but certainly it's uh, very user friendly. From the front, it's a candy bar design. The display takes almost about two-thirds of the front space. Uh, it is a pretty low resolution. It's colorful, it's bright, but you can see distinct lines between the different color shades, so don't expect a lot of fancy graphics. But you really wouldn't anyway because this phone doesn't have a lot of apps or any games. You're certainly not going to use it for those things. Down below is the navigation controls. These are well designed. There's a square toggle with a central OK button. They are silver. They're a little reflective, so they stand out from the black keypad below. There are also two soft keys. There's a dedicated speakerphone key, a back key, and the talk and in power buttons. And down below is the alphanumeric keypad. That's colored in black, of course. I found this to be a little squashed together. Also didn't like that they were the keypad buttons were perfectly flat with the surface of the phone. The other controls are raised, which is nice. So if you can use them by feel and there is some definition. Here on the top, there's a 3.5 millimeter headside jack. And on the bottom, there's the micro USB port, which is also used for the charger. On the left, there's a volume rocker. It's easy to find when you're on a call. Over here you have the micro SD card slot that fits cards up to 32 gig and the uh, camera shutter. Now if you want to open the phone, just slide it up like this and you can see that the screen rotates 90 degrees automatically. There's no need to change it or do anything like that. The phone doesn't have an accelerometer so if you tip it, the screen isn't going to change but it's only when you open and close the phone. Down below are two soft keys. Those are used, only used when the phone is open and they correspond to the commands right above. I do like the keyboard. It's pretty roomy. It's pretty spacious. The keys are slightly, slightly raised above the surface of the phone, which is nice. There are four rows of keys, so that means the letters share space with numbers and punctuation and symbols. It's not a big deal. Personally, I'd like five rows of keys, but if you're going to go for a compact phone, you, you, you sort of need to live with four. There, uh, of course, you can switch back and forth between the different functions of the key using either the shift or the function key. Nice space bar in the middle. It's pretty wide. It's right where it should be and there's a dedicated .com key, which is nice. There are arrow buttons over here, and there's a dedicated at key, so you don't have to go in and use the shift when you're typing out emails. Now, this phone really is built for communication. The menu system is pretty simple. It's just got it's the icons in the front, and then as you get internal menus, it's all list-based. It does have a two megapixel camera. You can see here on the back, uh, photo quality isn't very good. Video quality isn't good at all, so it's really not worth uh, taking photos unless you just need something on the fly. And then, again, don't count on anything spectacular. Uh, there is a bare-bones music player. There's Bluetooth. It's a WAP browser, so uh, if you're used to using a smartphone, you're not going to get those full HTML pages or even the mobile pages. These are going to be WAP pages, which means that they are even more stripped down. So just lines of text, maybe the occasional photo, no graphics. Uh, it is a little clunky to use because you're moving the cursor around with this with this uh, navigation key, so there's no touch screen. So I really don't think web browsing is worth it on the phone. It's also 3G EVDO, so web, uh, even on those simple pages, they do take a few seconds to download. Good thing, though, is texting is very easy using that keyboard. Call quality is good. It is a phone that excels at communication, just what a phone should do. Just don't count on it for really anything else. But if you want to keep in touch, the Samsung Array is not a bad buy. I'm Ken Sherman, and this is the Samsung Array. It's available at both Sprint and Boost Mobile.